this is part two of Lego Digital Designer tips and tricks. I am using a trial version of a screen recorder, so I had to cut it off at 10 minutes. Anyway, so I was saying you should never have more than one bin open at a time because then you have to scroll all the way down here before you can collapse or before you know when you've gotten to the next one. Collapse them all. Um, the dividers, they're called dividers, not bins. Um, but let's say you had all these open and you're trying to find a part. I mean, that defeats the purpose of having bins. You should only have one bin open at a time. So just click on this frequently. Whenever you go to get a new part, make sure that all but one are collapsed. You only need to be in one bin at a time. All right, next on the list, collapse all. Grab some more parts that you might be able to use. Okay, so while you're designing parts, you're going to... Obviously, you don't have every single part in here memorized. And sometimes you're going to be looking for a part that might fit what you need to do. So let's say in this bin particularly, you're trying to find something to, some way to fit two parts together in a weird way. You need to change angles. And um, and do it in a limited amount of space. You scroll down, and as you see something, you're looking for one part, but then you see something similar to it, like oh, that looks similar to something I want to use. Let me just pull that out there in case I do need it in the future. And keep on going, looking for your part. Oh, that looks like something I might want to use. Oh, that looks like something I might want to use. Just drag them out there so that once you have all those parts out on the field, and you're trying to develop or design a new type of connection it's really helpful to have these parts out here that you can just look at and visualize um, because like I said there's no way you can memorize all these and have them floating around in your brain at the same time and be able to sort them out um, mentally so now that I've got all these parts I can envision different parts going together uh, different ways and oh well, what combinations could I use um, because that first part that you use probably isn't going to be the right one I mean you may think you want to use it but you end up needing to use something slightly different and if you pull them out as you go you can have them sitting right in front of you whenever you need to use them that may have been a little ambiguous but I hope you got what I meant by that uh, keep your bins closed grab some more parts control s yes save often uh, I'm not sure if there's an autosave feature. I've never found out. I've never had to find out because I always hit Control S whenever I want to save. I haven't been saving because I don't care about this one. But moving on, hinge tool. Uh, there are going to be times when you need to change the angle of a of a part. Let's. Um, I'll give you two examples. One, I will start with this. You select a thing that you want to spin around uh, an axis you click on your hinge tool and then you click on the axis you want to spin it around it brings up this little do flatchy here which you click and drag that and whoops let's go back to 180 on that um, I'm not sure I haven't fully mastered using this hinge tool yet but you're supposed to be able to There we go. I'm not really sure. It may be like have something to do with your view or something, but the hinge tool you can use to rotate things. Um, and it doesn't have to just be a part. It could be a part of a part. So I'm going to use the hinge tool over here on this right here. Click on the hinge tool, click on this, and I can spin the motor. So if you've got gears in particular that need to be meshed together, you can use the hinge tool to make sure that the teeth uh, don't get in the way of each other next flex tool let's do a really quick example vertical snap um, there's a particular part that I know is going to be good for this and corrugated pipe parts that have this little um, yellow ribbon type symbol right there are flex parts it means you can flex them uh, I'm going to use this corrugated pipe here. I'm going to flip it up and I'm going to attach it in right there and show you how to use the flex tool. Let's zoom out a little bit. Center up on this. Click on your flex tool here. See the little uh, yellow ribbon? Click on the end that you want to attach into something else and just hover the mouse over whatever you're trying to attach it to. It takes a little while for it to get down to it, but just give it time. Snaps itself right in. Now there are some nuances to this, but um, but I'll let you figure those out. That's the basics of how you use the flex tool. You can do some pretty cool stuff with that, but that's the basics. Um, 
part lookup online, we already talked about that. The paint tool, let's say that you have a slightly off colored part, and I may have already talked about this, I'm not sure. Um, say you want to change that to yellow. Instead of going in your bin and finding the yellow one, you just click on the part and change everything that you want to yellow. Let's say I want this to be whatever color that is, gray, black. Uh, purchasing parts online, we're not going to go over that, but base, well, actually, let's go over that super quick. You look this up. Uh, and you can it's called like pick a brick or something click on buy I'm not sure um, I'm not really prepared to like go through that right now um, but you can you can select parts on here and then look them up online and buy them individually if you need them sorting parts by colors you see all these parts are identical but they're different colors click on your color bin and select the color that you want just any single color should work because pretty much all these parts come in every single color and now you only see one copy of each part instead of a copy of each part for each color uh... switching view modes we talked about that going between LDD, Mindstorms and extended LDD uh... trick for getting a forty 42 th oh and to cancel your color filter you just click here and click on that X right there cancel the filter I'm gonna go with a 40 tooth gear and I'm gonna show you a problem that you're gonna have with them uh, guaranteed if you're trying to get these things onto an axle it's gonna be so hard to get it to go into the middle you can see I'm having a hard time right now but what you can do is once you do well you can first of all drag your axle into the center that makes it a little bit easier but don't really worry too much about exactly where you want it to go gosh I'm having a hard time but you can grab a smaller gear at this point and put that in uh, I'm looking for one in particular that's really useful um, this one right here, Technic Coupler, because this won't allow the gear to go into any of those holes that are close to it. So now, if you select both of these, drag them away, and go to hook it up, up select them both, go to hook it up, you don't have to worry about it going into the ones that are right next to the hole because that Technic piece will block the axle from going through and it'll automatically go through the center. Building guide mode, obviously you should know about this, it's pretty basic, you switch to building guide mode and it'll generate step-by-step -step instructions for building whatever you have on the screen. So it's telling you how to build this part and it'll just have you build a whole bunch of individual pieces because I got them all strewn over the screen. You can generate an HTML building guide that you can save and view later. And then invert selections by, I'm not sure if I'll have enough time for this, but let's say you build something um, and there's the mirror opposite of it somewhere else and you don't want to rebuild the whole thing but you can't just copy and paste it either the way you do that is you do copy and paste it you set it right in front of it and pretend like there's a mirror there and you just do everything the exact opposite of what it would be on in a mirror so let's make this a little bit more of a complicated piece so that you can see how useful it can be so This is a slightly more complicated example, um, but you can see it's hard to envision it, but I find it's very easy if you just hold it right in front of it and envision that there's a mirror in between them. And at, once, it, once you envision that, it becomes very intuitive where everything goes. Switch to the other side. And um, to kind of fact check, you just say, what is that, what, is, is that mirrored? Yes, it is. You're done. That's about all I got. If you guys got any questions, just hit me up in the comment section and ask me any questions you got. I'm sure I'll learn some more things in the future um, that I can keep you guys up to date with. This is something I wish I would have had when I first started out. If I could go back in time, I would totally watch my YouTube video. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.